G'day Archie students, I have just received the Architecture Yearbook Competition the Architecture Competitions Yearbook from 2019. I've just had this sent to me by Competitions Archie, so thank you very much to the guys at Competitions Archie for sending that to me. I've also got a couple of them to give away, so stick around to the end and I'll talk about um, how you can get this book for free. For now, I'm gonna go pour myself a cup of coffee because you would know that architecture students need their coffee and we love our coffee. When I get back, we'll run through this amazing publication showing the best winning designs from architectural competitions around the globe. I'll be right back. I'm always super scared if I'm gonna pour this all over my computer or my my microphone or something We survived this time though. So before we get into it, let me just explain what's actually in this book I'm gonna try and just hold this up over my coffee over my microphone So the architecture competitions yearbook for 2019 is an international showcase for architecture competitions The editors have made a selection of 12 of the best most interesting competitions featuring 40 of the most outstanding projects of the year The editor does also mention in the book that with this book We not only want to promote the idea of taking part in architectural competitions But also want to help enhance your creativity and encourage you to become a better architect or student just a reminder I will be giving away a couple of copies of this book So if you want to know how you can get this book for free do stick around to the very end where I will mention it No skipping ahead though. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump straight into it So I'm just gonna go ahead and just flick through the book and then I'm gonna showcase some of the best ones I'm not gonna go through all of them because there is a lot in here I'm just gonna react to some of the designs that I'm looking at and just explain kind of my thoughts on them Hopefully it gives you guys some ideas for your next projects and just help showcase to you what some great designs look like So the first competition we're gonna be looking at is the silent meditation forest cabins competition This competition called for designs for off-grid meditation cabins to be located in rural Latvia within the grounds of traditional tea makers Ozolini 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 as winning designs were put forward for consideration for construction designs were judged for their integration within the forest and their sensitivity to the environment so the first prize for this competition was solo cabin by David Flores and Stefani Zlativa and this just goes to show that your designs don't have to be super complicated this project is literally just two rectilinear forms stacked on top of each other at different angles. But guess what? That's what the jury was obviously looking for. This simple design did take home the first prize despite being a super simple concept. And we'll dig into why this actually was a first winning prize despite being so simple in design. So Solo Cabin is an arrangement of three stacked spaces uh, and they are two by two meters in size placed at various angles. And the decision behind this was to highlight the various layers of nature, allowing visitors to experience it from the forest floor to the branches of the tree canopy. And I'm guessing these little black lines here are representing the trees surrounding the actual design. But because they're going for the simplistic look, they've just used black lines to represent the trees. And I think that's quite cool as well just to showcase the simplicity. They're obviously trying to make it simple. It's not like one of those designs where they haven't tried to make it simple, but it just is simple. This design obviously has a intentful simplicity to it. And I think that's always something to consider when doing a simple design is that it's simple by intent, not by uh, lack of putting in effort. The submission includes a collection of drawings and renderings that are provocative, unique, and highly developed with advanced construction details. And because this is a project that the jury is looking at getting built, um, having those advanced construction details is also very important um, and probably played a key role into helping this design become a first prize winner. So the structure is clad in timber planks juxtaposed perpendicularly. Perpendicularly. Ah, oh, yeah, that's hard to say. Perpendicularly. Let's just say that. It is topped by a roof of polycarbonate sheets that bring in natural daylight from above. The opaque wood shell highlights the transparent stacked windows that protrude from it and provide focus points to various surrounding street elements. And the jury does question the use of a hammock just used solely for sleeping, but otherwise finds the project and its graphic methods refreshing. Because it is a design that could be readily built, I think that's what also ticks a lot of boxes for the jury. When doing architectural competitions or when designing in general, it's always a good idea to know what the actual client wants or in this sense the jury what do they want what are they looking for and then tailor your design and your submission to the needs and wants of the jury rather than just doing what you want you know this this person could have just gone on their own kind of um, take of the design but because they were following the brief and because they were doing what the client wanted 
that's what stood out to the jury. So overall, it's a simplistic design, but it's been executed well and it's ticked all the boxes. So well done to David and Stefani for this cool project. So the second prize winner of the student award of this competition was a project named Nest by Marco Simzio. And the Nest is a meditative tree house. The jury was pleased with this submission's use of the trees to provide a home to a meditative cabin, isolated in a quiet space above the ground. Again, this is just a really simplistic design. And I'm guessing that because the jury just wanted something that could be readily built, um, simplicity is one of those key factors that they were looking for and that is hence represented by these winning projects. The project includes a detailed and captivating description of a visitor's arrival to the forest and his or her experience traveling to and entering the cabin. The design employs a charred wood cladding that blends the cabin with the bark of the forest trees. This material also increases the cabin's resistance to weather and decay. On the interior, a light spruce finish gives way to a warm space that is strikingly different from the exterior shell. And the jury says the drawings do reflect the project's simplicity and to consider Consider construction, the details would need to be further advanced to include insulation and waterproofing. That's always something important to remember. Any closed building that's being habited should have some kind of insulation or uh, waterproofing as well because it's pretty essential to have that stuff. And they say, nevertheless, the project is feasible and provides minimal disturbance to the forest. So this next competition is the Tokyo Parking Tower Competition by Rethinking Architecture. The idea of the competition revolves around this idea of Tokyo being a business Busy, hustling place that has no real place for parking. Despite being a clean and organized city, there isn't really much place and it raises the concern of where do people park. So Rethinking Architecture Competitions mentions that in all this orderly chaos, transportation is one of the most important subjects of the city. There is a large mass of traffic that raises a big question. How can you manage a large mass of car parks when there are not enough square meters of land? Is it possible to manage a tower that meets these needs? So the Tokyo parking tower is about building a tower for car parking. Let me have a sip of coffee. So first prize was awarded to the project Another Tori or N Another Tori. This project was by Francesco and let me try and pronounce this properly, Dian Tuono, as well as Galio Della Sedi. Sorry if I pronounced them wrong. I am not great at my Italian. So Francesco and Galio mentioned that in the near future, urban mobility is not going to be only ground-based. Humans always dreamt to fly, and thanks to EV toll vehicles, which I'm guessing is kind of electric automatic vehicles or something like that, they mentioned that we will be able to fly normally and on a daily basis using them for urban transportation. The aim for the project is to create a relationship between cars mobilities and its parking with this kind of automated driving vehicle, so it's going to be an urban airport for these flying automated vehicles. In other words, they're kind of building a tower for urban taxis that are flying. It's some pretty next level shit, I gotta say. So this project at first glance, it's it's got a great strategy to it. I like the concept behind it. They've definitely grounded themselves with a strong concept and a good starting point to go from. So they've mentioned that there's a skyport at the top, which is where all the vehicles would land I guess and then there's a waiting room which then takes your car or your flying taxi down to the automatic car park. There are also some offices on the bottom bit as well as well as a playground on the very bottom floor. This playground doesn't look too appealing to me and this is just me being really critical. If it was me I wouldn't really have that timber as the flooring with those big ass columns as well. If you've got a playful space you're really looking at you know softer materials with brighter colors. To me that's just not too inviting and obviously that's just my subjective view. The jury obviously liked this project, that's why it got first place. As I said, I'm just being critical and trying to pick stuff out. So ultimately, I think that's a good project. The materiality is a bit basic, but apart from that, it's a yeah very cool concept and I like the idea behind it. Okay, so we're gonna skip the second project here just because it's in Spanish. I'm not too sure how to read Spanish, unfortunately, but um, the third project, well, the third prize of this competition was called Parking Faux Rest. There's, um, it's, it's actually forest, but it's got rest in capital letters. At first glances, it's obviously a very green project. It sort of looks a bit like accommodation, to be honest, like a residential tower more than a parking tower, but that could be the aim of the project. Let's find out and read what it says here. This was by the last names. There's no first names here, but Shurov 
as well as Nikolskaya. Nikolskaya. Uh, these are Russian names, which is also why I'm not too good at pronouncing them. Shurov and Nikolskaya say, if we assume that a person will soon begin to abandon the car, we can also imagine that the parking function will cease to be relevant. And this is quite cool because now we're looking at parking and cars no longer being needed. So they were wondering, with these vehicles no longer being in use, how to keep this place relevant? How to build something that's going to be still relevant in 100 years time? Parking could easily be transformed into something constantly relevant, such as housing. Abandoning the car, a person leaves behind a parking space while acquiring an area where it can transform into a space for yourself. So rather than parking a car, you park yourself there. Parking forest is a place where you'll want to rest. So I was right. It does turn into accommodation, which I think is pretty cool. I like the idea of including all the greenery inside it so it's not just the building. Obviously, giving back to the environment with a tower or a big urban project is not a bad idea. We need to breathe. We need trees to breathe. So... Good on you, Shurov and Nikol Saya for that cool project. Now, looking at the honorable mentions, I've got a couple of projects that ring a bell here. Koi Tower here. That looks a whole lot like the Samri building right next to my house over here. I'm not saying that they've copied it, but I can obviously see there's been some kind of inspiration from that building. You know, that's not a bad thing. I think it's great to take inspiration from things. So I just see that rub through there. So good on them for that. And then looking at this other project, I'm trying to think of where I've seen this from before. Yearning. And this is obviously a minimal project with just the black, but it... I, th I think I know what it... It looks a lot like an album cover I know. Let me get this up real quick. I'm just going to type this up on Google. Yeah. I don't know why the heck... So, this album cover by O Hiroshima is called In Silence We Yearn. The project name of this is Yearning, and it's got that same diagonal slanted, just minimalistic black building. So I'm really curious to know if this building had some inspiration from this album cover, despite this album or this band being just some real underrated and no one really knows about them. So I'm really curious about that. Unfortunately, I don't have any more information about this project because it's an honorable mention, but that's really interesting just because this is called In Silence We Yearn, and that's called Yearning, and they both look similar. That would be really cool if that's inspiration from there. I don't know, but I'm curious now, so if um, any of the authors of this project, I would love to know that. Let's move on to the next project. This is the Tulum Plastic School Competition by Ark Storming. This challenged participants to design a school for the NGO Los Amigos de la Esquina in Tulum, Mexico. There were over 230 proposals from contestants of more than 50 nationalities. That's really cool. That's awesome. That's a global competition you got going on there. The ideas behind the competition were education, art, cooperation, sustainability, recycling, and that is what the competition uh, gives you a chance to work on or base this design off of. So in this competition, Arc Storming and the participants have been able to discuss about the current problem of the plastic pollution in Mexico. The main materials of the designs have been precisely that one, recycled plastic. They have had a chance to show the world what design and architecture is capable of to create something that can be a world landmark for its uniqueness. So the finalist teams have proposed imaginative alternatives such as reusing plastic bottles, fruit boxes or plastic pallets. The result of this contest shows that there are new, very attractive ways of designing a school using Using recycled plastic and that it is possible to introduce this material into architecture. I would love to see more recycled plastic being used on buildings. In fact, I might actually use it for some of my future projects because if 230 students, architects and graduates can design a building using recycled plastic, why can't anyone else? So the first prize of this competition was by Daniel Garcia and William Smith from the US. And so at the start of this, they do mention that of the 6.3 billion metric tons of plastic waste created historically as of 2015, only 9% has been successfully recycled. Of what remains, 12% of that has been incinerated into the air and the remaining 79% of that has accumulated as a landfill or spread as trash across oceans and landscapes. And this is really just the start of a massive global waste trade industry where prices are dropping, 
transportation's getting cheaper and there is more and more waste. So Daniel and William do just want to create a more sustainable project to minimize the waste of plastic and promote this idea of recycling. This proposal invokes an easily recognizable symbol of our global exchanges, the international plastic pallet. Its life cycle spent in transit, the pallet is put to use shipping other plastics around the globe. As a structural object and as a literal representation of waste trade, the project's use of the pallet avoids common tendencies to aestheticize plastic waste itself. So set as the underlying structural order of the building, the Quadratian pallet is elevated to an architectonic level. It's engineered porosity filtering light into the school's lofted interior. The pallet is threaded through its forklift channels onto a repeating bay system. So it's this idea of modulizing this plastic Pallet. So encased in clear recyclable corrugated plastic, the building is protected from the elements while allowing daylight to filter in. And this causes the structure to become a beacon for the community at night. That's an extremely well done project and the idea of reusing the plastic pallet as a modulized element I think is awesome. And someone might wonder, how does just designing the singular building, you know, using half a ton of recyclable plastic, how does that, you know, commit to sustainability? How is that actually helping the environment? And the fact is this project being recycled, using recycled elements, it's not just giving these materials another use for their lifetime. It actually causes the building to act as a catalyst to, you know, let other people know that this can be done. You can design your buildings out of recycled plastic as well. And because I've done it, you can do it too. So it's not just giving these materials another use. It's you know, acting as a catalyst for change. So the second project of this competition was by David Nizi Kung um, from Malaysia. And my first look at this page is just stuff everywhere. It's, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff everywhere, but I think that kind of complements the design being this really colorful and complicated design. So this project has a concept based on children focused design as well as the wellness of the community. The aim is to create intimate spaces for children. The proposal has a ground and mezzanine floor which connects to the rooftop of the existing building. They've lifted the classrooms and offices to the mezzanine to maintain ground floor as a public space which is a multi-purpose space. So they mentioned the construction not only focuses on reusing any plastic waste but more specifically the plastic bottle and they mentioned they don't want it to involve any need for heavy machinery or you know professional tradesmen well done to David and being a solo project that's always commendable well done there are over 35 more projects that I haven't gone through yet as well as you know 10 other competitions and so I'm gonna have to leave that for you to read in your own time if you want to win a copy of this book I'm actually giving away a couple of them so if you want to win this book all you have to do is like the video subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment down below saying you want the book seven days after post Posting this video, I'm going to collate all the people who have commented on it and put them into a random name generator. I am then going to check if you have liked and subscribed to the YouTube channel and then I will pick that winner from random and send them the book. I will then be doing a similar competition on my Instagram page so if you haven't already, go check out my Instagram at Successful soon. I will be giving away another one of these books over there as well. If you guys just want to purchase this book for yourself, you can go check out Competitions Arky. The link to go and buy this book will be in the description description below. Thank you again to Competitions Arky for sending me this one and organizing this competition giveaway. A bigger thanks to you for watching this video and making it through to the end. I always appreciate you guys. If you want to check out another one of my videos, you can press the button to the side here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and stay well.